Have a little sip from the magic potion, suggests Getafix the druid. I'm using this picture from Asterix to introduce you to the concept of intensity modulated radiotherapy in situations where critical organs are close to tumors to increase the compatibility of tumor coverage and protection of organs at risk in radiotherapy. I would first like to show you a situation where no protection concept is needed. Stereotactic body radiotherapy, or SBRT, often works when tumor lesions are located far from critical organs at risk, such as central airways. When radiation oncologists employ SBRT, or high-dose intensity modulated radiotherapy, also called IMRT, they want to achieve good local control to hopefully prolong survival of the patient or to allow a rest period of chemotherapy in patients with oligometastatic disease. The potential benefits of therapy are always to be weighted against acute and late toxicity but also against the risk for systemic progression. Now let me show you a situation where there is a big risk for toxicity because of the proximity of the target volume to the bronchus. The pink structure shows the PTV which overlaps with the right main bronchus that we have delineated in light blue here. In literature there are reports of perforations after SBRT without respecting the high vulnerability of central airways. This situation appears to be a dilemma. Should we prescribe a lower dose to the entire PTV at the price of the local control? Is the application of more fractions of SBRT a solution for the case? Or should we refrain from SBRT and revert to conventional chemoradiotherapy in this case. Here I would like to point out the difference between simultaneous integrated boost and simultaneous integrated protection, ZIP and SIP. The integrated boost shown on the left side is an IMRT technique prescribing a higher dose, for instance, to the macroscopic tumor whilst prescribing a lower dose to the clinical target volume. The strategy on the right side is the opposite. A small part of the total PTV is prescribed lower dose in order to protect an organ at risk which is very close to or overlapping with the PTV. Please note that the organ at risk is not shown in this example. You are already familiar with this tumor volume shown on the left from one of the previous images. On the right hand panel you see what we mean with the SIP concept, carving out a small sub-volume from the total PTV, defining a volume of protection. On the far right side of the protection volume, which we call the SIP volume, is highlighted in magenta. On this image, I would like to introduce the nomenclature that we use for the SIP concept. On the left side, we have delineated an organ at risk in blue together with its respective planning risk volume, the PRV. On the right side, the dashed black lines show the internal target volume of a tumor and the magenta circle around it is the respective planning target volume the PTV. The yellow structure is the dominant PTV because we can prescribe the full dose to that region as it is away from the organ at risk. The SIP PTV, the sub-target volume of protection, is the hatched area of overlap between the organ at risk and the PTV in purple. Examples for critical organs at risk are given in this list of structures and from a radiation biology point of view these are predominantly built from functional subunits of serial and not parallel architecture as described by Rodney Withers in the 80s of the last century. 
Next, I use a clinical case of a patient with a clad skin tumor to illustrate the step-by-step -step procedure from the contouring all the way through a treatment plan which is ready for use. In the T2-Haste sequence, you can see the cuff of tissue around the main bile duct that extends to the celiac trunk. Cranially, the left bile duct stops at the bifurcation. In the fat set T1 vibe sequence with IV contrast, the portal venous phase shows the narrowing of the portal vein and thrombosis of the left portal vein. Furthermore, they are enlarged lymph nodes in the liver hilum and retroperitoneally. The diffusion weighted B400 images also show the cuff around the main bile duct and the lymph nodes. At FDG PET CT imaging, you can see the FDG avid lymph nodes and also the primary at the bifurcation of the bile duct around the hypertense biliary stents seen in the CT component. This coronal plane 4D PET CT shows the movement of the tumor in the liver hilum with inspiration and expiration in radiotherapy treatment planning position in a body frame cushion. Now we look at the contouring of the primary tumor, that is the GTV, in yellow at the bifurcation of the bile duct. The light blue structures are the portal vein and the vena cava inferior. The structures in purple are the lymph nodes that reach as far inferior as the horizontal part of the duodenum. The same structures can be seen in this coronal view. The additional red structure around the yellow structure is the ITV, the internal target volume, that was generated from the motion of the stent at the bifurcation in the 4D CT. We are now back to the transversal plane. The magenta contour is the total PTV for this plan. Appreciate the orange structure, which is the stomach, with a khaki colored expansion representing the planning risk volume, the PRV of the stomach. Further down, this continues as the duodenum with its PRV. Both the stomach and the horizontal part of the duodenum overlap with the total PTV. Now, the protection subvolume, the SIP PTV, is generated as the structure of overlap between the total PTV and the PRV of the stomach and duodenum. In this case, the PTV has 321 cc and the SIP PTV measures 7 cc and therefore it is reasonably small. Next, we created for this patient a boost PTV to the primary tumor at the bifurcation of the bile duct because local control is particularly important in this region for the further clinical course of the disease. This volume is treated as a simultaneous integrated boost, a classical SIB. The coronal plane view also illustrates the relative position of the respective target volumes and organs at risk. In this 3D reconstruction, you can see the khaki PRV of the stomach and the duodenum together with the purple total PTV. This is then switched off to better see the lilac SIP PTV overlapping with the stomach and duodenum. Now that all structures have been segmented, the physicist needs to know the dose constraints for the stomach and the duodenum that are shown for a total number of 12 fractions. We have chosen to treat this patient with 12 fractions to reduce the risk of severe complications of the stomach and the duodenum during and after treatment. As you can see, we use the same dose constraints for these two organs and we have defined the maximum dose, the dose to half a milliliter, 5 milliliters, 10 milliliters and 15 milliliters to use them as dose constraints. We prescribe 12 fractions of 5.5 gray to the median for the boost volume as a conventional simultaneous integrated boost and 12 fractions of 4 gray to the median 
for the non-boost PTV in the dominant PTV. Importantly, we did not specify the prescribed dose to the PTV of simultaneous integrated protection, the SIP. For this volume, we asked to have the highest possible dose that does not infringe those constraints for the stomach and duodenum. Prescription is according to ICRU, however, the dose maximum should be as high as 110 to 120 percent to achieve the typical table mount shape of the dose distribution which is used in SBRT. The physicist has created a plan that combines three arcs to treat this three-tier volume with IMRT, including a SIP and a ZIP volume respectively. In the transversal view, the yellow circle represents the three arcs. The yellow isodose line shows the 95% isodose around the boost volume. This detail shows the absolute isodoses in grey. 62.7 grey in yellow, 45.6 grey in green, 30 grey in light blue and 15 grey in dark blue. As I move the red crosshairs through the volume you can read off the absolute dose in grey in the top right hand corner. First I carefully check the dose in the dominant PTV slice by slice all the way down to the inferior border of the PTV. Next I start from above again and now check the dose in the critical SIP PTV of overlap with the PRV of the stomach and the duodenum. You can see how the SIP PTV receives a reduced dose compared to the dominant PTV from the numbers in the top right hand corner and from the position of the green 45.6 grey isodose in relation to the orange stomach and duodenum structures. Often the same analysis in the coronal plane is helpful to fully appreciate the dose distribution in the SIP PTV. Finally, the boost region is also monitored to make sure that the high dose region is adequately planned. The final step is the analysis of dose volume histogram. Let's start to look at the dose distribution to the PTVs in the relative volume DVH. The 321 milliliter dominant PTV receives a median dose of 48 gray in 12 fractions. The 75 milliliter dark purple boost volume is part of the dominant PTV explaining the dog leg of the dominant PTV to the right. 66 gray are given to the median of the SIP volume. The small 7 milliliter SIP PTV receives a lower dose compared to the other PTVs and a median of 43.5 gray is given. The orange structures of the stomach and duodenum are also shown together with the PRV structures in khaki. Then I check the minimal dose that is received by 95% of the respective PTVs. The x-axis is labeled in grey in the bottom. The SIP PTV, the total PTV, the dominant PTV and the boost PTV are checked. Now the dose to 5% of the same PTVs is analyzed. It is essential to then change the y-axis to absolute volume in CC. The dominant PTV volume is only slightly smaller compared to the total PTV and runs just below it in the top section. The boost volume is significantly smaller with only 75 cc and the curve runs all the way to the high dose region. Remember that the SIP PTV is as small as 7 cc and it does not reach as far as the others to the right as an indirect sign of the protection. The safety of the plan is now checked in a crucial last step 
where the dose constraints are compared with the actually achieved dose to the stomach and duodenum, which are shown in orange. As the stomach is larger as the duodenum, its line is above that of the duodenum. The PRV is shown in yellow. Since all our dose constraints are related to small volumes and the largest one is only 15 cc, I zoom further into the DVH to blow up these small volumes. Now it is easy to measure the dose given to the 0.5, 5, 10 and 15 cc of the stomach and the duodenum. This figure is taken from a manuscript where we have published the SIP approach. It shows the dose analysis for six patients and the dose distributions for each patient for the dominant PTV, the total PTV and the small SIP PTV. The blue diamonds show the mean dose to the PTVs and the pink bars the minimal and the maximal doses. This final slide summarizes the stepwise procedure for this approach. It starts by contouring the respective target volumes, followed by contouring the volumes of the organs at risk. Third, the subvolume is created by the overlap region between the total PTV and the PRV of the critical organ at risk. Fourth, full dose is prescribed to the dominant PTV using an ICRU type prescription. Fifth, dose constraints need to be provided to the physicist for the critical organs at risk. Sixth, an IMRT plan was developed where the SIP PTV receives the highest possible dose that respects the constraints of the organs at risk. Seventh, Careful analysis of the plan needs to be conducted to check whether a plan is safe to be delivered or not. If constraints are violated, higher number of fractions should be tried as a possible solution to the problem. In our institution we perform upper abdominal SBRT with 3, 5, 8 or 12 fractions. However, this approach is also suitable for conventionally fractionated IMRT. I hope that this introduction to the SIP concept is helpful for you. In case of any questions, please feel free to contact me via email at thomas.brunner at med.ovgu.de. Thanks for your attention and goodbye.